Hey there, Sam. Authentication is something super important in a typical web app, but it is also something that we all dreaded to write. Luckily for us, Laravel has an official package called Fortify that takes care of everything about authentication for us, so we don't need to start from scratch. All right, let's install it. We'll go to the documentation and copy the installation instruction. We'll install it using Composer. Then we'll publish the config file. And finally, run a migration to create the relevant tables. Once we do that, we should go to our app config file and load the Fortify service provider class into the provider's array. The Fortify service provider will register all the relevant Fortify actions for us. As you can see here inside the boot method, we've got correct user, update user, update password, and reset password. And each of these actions are customizable. And these action classes are living inside the action folder in our app directory, which was created by Fortify when we published the configuration of the package. These action classes will contain a logic to tell Fortify what to do on the corresponding authentication operations. Other than binding the authentication logic, the Fortify service provider has also defined two rate limiters for us. The login rate limiter, where it will block the user after five failed attempts in a minute. You are free to customize the duration of the limiter. For example, if you are building a financial app, then it might make sense to improve the security by making the interval an hour instead of a minute. The other rate limiter is for the two-factor authentication feature provided by Fortify. Based on the definition here, the user cannot submit more than five two-factor verification per minute. Okay, now let's go into the Fortify config file and explore the configurations that are available to us. So firstly, we see a guard option here. In summary, guards define how users are authenticated for each request. By default, Fortify is using the web guard and we can find its configuration inside the off config file. The web guard is using the session driver, which basically means that we are storing the authenticated user inside a session storage. And every time there's an incoming request, we'll simply verify if the user exists inside the session storage or not. If yes, that means the user is already logged in. If we use a token driver instead, then the user will be authenticated solely based on API token containing inside the request. The provider option indicates a way for Laravel to retrieve the user information. And the relevant option is defined further down in this file. And as you can see here, the users provider is using Eloquent and the matching model is a class name that refers to our user model. For most of the time, you don't really need to touch this option as they will just work out of the box. But if you really want to learn how to create our own customized guard and the details on how authentication work behind the scene in Laravel, we will explore more about this in another video. Otherwise, there'll simply be too much to cover. Anyway, let's go back to our Fortify config file. So the web guard simply means that we want Fortify to authenticate the user using the session storage and also Eloquent. For the next configuration, we have passwords, which is again a config to tell Fortify the password reset settings. And the corresponding configuration value would be inside our off config file under the passwords key. Again, for most of the time, you don't need to touch these settings. The next config is username and email. Username needs to match with one of the model fields in our user model. And email refers to a field in the incoming forgot password and reset password request, where we need this field to send a user a reset password link. Home is the home URL of our app, and it is a location where Fortify will redirect a user to when the user has successfully logged in. Since we're building an API server, this value is not that relevant to us. Prefix is a great way to add a prefix to all the 45 routes that will be registered. And domain is a way for us to add a subdomain in case we want to delegate off our authentication route to a different domain. And just for demonstration, we can list all of our routes now by using PHP Addison route list. And as you can see in the list, hopefully it is not too small for you. These are all the API routes that are provided by Fortify out of the box. Now, if I add a prefix, something like API, 
read run php artisan route list again and as you can see all the 45 api routes have now got an api prefix in front of them the middleware option allow us to easily attach middleware to all of the 45 routes and the limiter option allows us to customize the limiter applied to the login and two-factor authentication routes which by default is using the login and two-factor rate limiter as we define in the service provider. The views option will tell Fortify if we want to include the routes that returns the view for each authentication operation. Since we're building an API server and we don't need a front end, I'll set it to false. The next section is the feature of Fortify that we want to enable in our app. So we have registration here, which will allow people to sign up as a user in our app. Reset password will enable users to reset their passwords. Email verification would force user to verify their email before they can sign up or use our app. Update profile information and update password will allow users to update their profile and change their password. Two-factor authentication will enable the user to set up two-factor authentication and a confirm password option here. If we set it to true, that means the user will need to enter their password during two-factor authentication. Whether it is enabling or disabling two-factor authentication or getting or renewing the recovery codes for two-factor authentication. Enabling each of these features will tell Fortify to include the corresponding routes. For example, at the moment, we have the two-factor authentication routes inside our route list. If I comment out the two-factor authentication features, go back to our terminal and run route list again, we can no longer see those routes in the routes list. And that's a quick introduction to Laravel Fortify. I think it's a good place to stop here. In the next video, we'll discuss more about the features in Laravel Fortify, and I'll go through each one of them with you. Key takeaway for this lesson, Laravel Fortify is a package that takes care of most authentication logic for us. Fortify provides us several authentication features out of the box, namely registration, login, reset password, email verification, update profile information, update password, and two-factor authentication, so that we don't need to implement these common features from scratch. That's it for now, and I'll see you again in the next lesson. If you enjoyed the content of this video, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and the bell icon for more content to come. It will really help me out. Thanks for your support.